on mark here. Train's fun. It's just fun to watch. Stand by the side of the tracks and watch the awesome majesty of a train go by. Oh, that train just didn't want to end. Yellowhead Mountain Viewpoint. That's what I'm doing today. I'm in Mount Robson Provincial Park. There's the trailhead. It's not that easy to find. If it wasn't for the book, there's no way. It's um, the road that you have to turn down is right in between Mount Fitzwilliam uh, turnoff and Lucerne Campground turnoff. And it's called Lucerne Station Road. But there's no sign for that until you slow right down and basically hop, you know, you're basically on top of the road. Then there's this tiny, tiny little sign there. Okay, this is like 2,200 feet elevation, so this will be a challenge because my legs are destroyed. This is day four of hiking. Day one, I wiped out my legs on uh, doing Pyramid Mountains, so. Supposed to be lots of insects on this guy. I've already put on a bunch of mosquito repellent. Let's check this out. 10 seconds of the trail and already there is a prize. Doesn't even look very old. Looks like it was dropped here on the trail maybe a week ago or something. It's, hasn't been sitting there that long. Well, as advertised, it's a steady uphill. Trail's in good shape so far. Not sure what elevation or anything I'm at because I can't get View Ranger to work. Gonna be a long arduous climb and i'll get my knee brace on and it'll be a long arduous descent it'll be an awesome view though i already see that the view is going to be pretty cool all right first view I believe is Yellowhead Lake. I was just walking that lake on Labrador T trail at Lucerne Campground. I might throw that stuff in at the end of this video just as a bonus. It's not worth its own video. It's just a quick little half hour straight level walk. Whew. You got a view like this? Time for a break. What a perfect shot of Yellowhead Lake. That green part right in the middle. There is a nice little bench here, but I just took a break. I think I will use it on the way back because this view is not to be wasted. I got to say that Mount Robinson Provincial Park is just well taken care of. I know there's a lot of money that pours into this park because of the rather big tourist attraction here, but man. So this trail isn't hard to follow, but these trees are all tagged. You know, uh, it's quite reassuring. I've never actually seen, I don't think I've seen so much tagging going on. There's one there. Yeah, I'm surprised I can't see another one right now. There's just a lot of them. 
they just make sure that you know where you're going. So even in winter, you could come and hike this if you're completely nuts, do some snowshoeing because of the tags. Oh, well, I can see another one now. This part here is just slight elevation change, so that's nice. It's actually a bit of a break because it's been a lot major elevation change. There, there's the next tag on the next tree. Well done, well done. Well, I'm coming to a few realizations. I was hiking to a viewpoint. That was kind of the first, um, you know, the first waypoint in my mind. Well, what I did not realize was that that bench was the viewpoint. And then the trail went into the trees and now it breaks out beneath Yellowhead Mountain. So fantastic shots of Yellowhead Mountain here. Oh. Just got bit by a mosquito. Geez, I already need to replenish my repellent. Oh boy, I'm stepping in water. Okay, I gotta pay attention to where I'm going here. So here, I will film, 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 and then I'll walk. That's the plan. Okay, it's only been like 10 seconds since I stopped filming, but you can see here, it'd be very easy to lose the path on this. So now you need those, mar those markings. Uh, this is pretty marshy. I've already got my feet. You know, it's already kind of uh, worn its way through my hiking boots. They're just my day boots and they're not very waterproof. So I think I'll go around here. I'm gonna pay attention where I'm walking and hold the camera rel relatively still. Okay, here's an obvious trail again. Still some wet parts. Ugh, oh, there was a good little wet portion. There's a blaze. Well, back in the forest again, I'm taking a break. <clears throat> you want a short little hike? Do that viewpoint up to the bench and then go through the forest to that shot of Yellowhead Mountain. If you want the big tough hike, keep going. Head into the forest. Apparently it stays in here quite a while, so. And it's pretty relentless uphill, so yeah. Not real steep, but it ought to be a workout. That is 100% new to me. Are we done 50% of the trail? Are we uh, 500 meters up? Was the trail name 50 at some point? You know, trail number 50? Don't know. Well, I'm quite surprised. I honestly thought this trail would be uphill the whole time. Like nothing, nothing, nothing but uphill. That's what it warned. But uh, it straightened out a little bit, which is a nice break. And now I'm even going downhill a touch. Yeah, we're going downhill. And here's a rare tree across this trail. There's been only three or four of them. It is well taken care of. And the area isn't like blasted with trees. There isn't a million trees here, so yeah. Doing good. Hoping to break out and get some more great views here in a, you know, soon enough. Okay, I just uh, tiptoed my way through all that. And now there's this. This trail does get a bit marshy and it is July 15th, so don't expect it to get no better. Maybe in, like in mid-August or something. So my feet are a little wet and I mean, for a hiker like me, that's, uh, you know, that's almost just part of the game. But, uh, you know, something to make note of. You will get your feet wet if you continue all the way down this trail. Well, now we're getting back into the nice forest again. I'm sure it won't last. Probably more marshes to come. Well, there hasn't been that much elevation change anymore, which is nice, but... Uh, the trail has been, I mean, it's very forested. You're always uh, stepping up or stepping down or stepping over roots or stepping over creeks or something. It's definitely not something where you can cruise at uh, four or five kilometers an hour. I mean, you know, you're always going around something. 
This is actually probably one of the more major creeks I've come across. Yeah, I think this is the most major creek. But yeah, that's uh, slowing me down somewhat. I'm gonna stop filming and get my poles for this. Use them. The farther you go, the more grown in by willows it is. But they have done some impressive work. Like this monster must have taken forever. And it looks very recent. These two huge pieces, my lord. Well, finally I'm almost there. Yellowhead Mountain sure looks different from this angle. This has been a tough hike. Tougher than I anticipated. I knew there was a, a boatload of elevation change, but it's the rocks and roots and swamps and creeks and oh that slows you down pretty good it's five and a half kilometers but yeah it's taking me a while i've been pushing myself the last half hour or so trying to get it done but it just isn't it isn't coming these ribbons have been pretty invaluable i mean for the most part I probably could have found the trail but there's been a few parts where yeah it's really not obvious well wow awesome I think I've arrived oh <laughs> I just literally just spotted this. Very handy. End of maintained trail. Very cool. So, when you look at guidebooks, they're always done by experts. You gotta take their times with a grain of salt. Uh, I'm not an expert. The time was given as two hours, six minutes. It took me two hours and 45 minutes. This is my fourth day hiking, but yeah, probably it wouldn't have been that much better even if I was not tired. I'm going to wander around in here a little bit. There is in the book, which I have, which is 20 years old, to be fair. There is like little satellite trails and stuff. I could hike up over there and check out uh, Mount Toot Toot, that sort of thing. But, you know, first I made a point of interest on my app. And I have to watch over that yellow marker because I could see myself getting lost in this real easy and not able to find my way back to the trail. So, gotta be careful in this. I'm not wandering far. I'm just gonna enjoy this beauty, my God. This is fantastic. I can't, that wall of white up there, that snow, I don't know how it's staying up there. I feel like it should be falling. Man. Well, there is sort of a trail in here, but I mean, this is uh, waist high. This is all willow. It's completely uh, blowing everything to pieces. Um, so I'm not going to wander around to this too much. I mean, it's, you know, there's just nowhere to go. It looks all beautiful, nice and green, but it's all waist high willow. So scratching up my legs. If I was a little more adventurous, I could uh, scramble over that slope and see uh, Mount Toot Toot, that sort of thing. But this is already pretty awesome. And I've seen some pretty amazing things here so far. So on my trip. Trailhead's just back over there. Spend a bit more time here. And then uh, start making my way out.
By the way, I, I was warned that this is prime grizzly bear country. I have been making all kinds of calls. I take every precaution with bears, except for the fact that I hike by myself, which is a big fat bear no-no. But I have bear spray and I make a lot of noise and I see no wildlife ever. No elk, no caribou, no bear, no coyotes, no nothing. They know I'm coming and they vamoose. This is classic grizzly bear, I think. I'm no expert, but to just pick up that rock and move it and eat all the bugs underneath it. Like that rock's huge. Grizzly bears are so bloody strong. And then all this is sort of torn up. You know, they, uh, they come in and they just tear things up trying to find bugs. So, none of it's fresh. But when you see big rocks moved, I mean, nothing is strong enough Maybe black bears, but I don't think they do that. I think that's just grizzlies. Sheesh. <laughs> there really is nowhere to go. Unless you're going to take uh, a machete and start whacking away at these willows. There's no place to go here. Um, you know, I have bare legs. I do have my the sleeves for these convertibles. But, you know, yeah, I don't want to bad enough. You would have to get some tough pants and start hammering through that stuff. And it'd be a lot of work. I don't want it that bad. Going down, especially when it's just slightly down, uh, not only is it hard on the legs and the knees, but it's very easy to just let your momentum start carrying you. And on a trail like this, you gotta be, you know, I could twist my ankle on a root, no problem. So you gotta hold yourself back, which means engaging those quads and be sure of every step. This is a pretty good part of trail actually. Uh, that's why I'm filming. Otherwise I want both my hands on my trekking poles because I just carry them along like this when I'm filming. But I'm still, I mean, I pretty much never raise my head. It is centered on the trail. Because I don't know what's underneath. Just a little bit of moss. There could be a big root poking out. And, you know, your feet are kind of tired. And your calves are sort of tired. And you also kind of relax a bit, right? Because I've reached my destination. Now I'm just on my way out. Ho oh, hum. I'm done the hike. You know, well, no. I have to... Concentrate, don't twist an ankle, watch your footing, there's a long way to go. I got at least two and a half hours to walk. So yeah. Other than that, I don't know what else to shoot on the way out of here. <laughs> That's the problem with the back and forth. Great spot for a break. Been out hiking for days, you're working hard. This is a great idea. Get your feet in the cold water. Can't even last very long in there. Maybe a minute or two. It's already been something like that. Woo. They're like red. <laughs> I'm raised not turning blue. Here's something I didn't put on camera the first time. This is really the only impediment on the trail. And that's a pretty big impediment. And that tree, it's not so much that the tree is huge, that the branches are deadly. What I did was went around this way. So there is a mark here to show you where the trail is. Came around over here. You'll see the uh, tramp down moss. There's the base of the tree. There you go. So the trail is up there. 
You just gotta go around the base. You can't really see the orange yet. And oh, you can see it a little bit through the trees there and you can see a blaze over there. So just go around and you'll be good. The way maintenance is on this trail, I bet that thing will be gone in a month or two anyway. It's pretty good out here. For those who don't know, this is a blaze. Uh, humans made it. They make it to mark out the trail. They just take a hatchet and they just chop a, ch a chunk out of the tree, you know, out of the bark, and it's a blaze. Hence the term trail blazing. So this, this uh, trail is very well taken care of and there's just blazes and markings and stuff everywhere. So there's one there. You know, the, the trail is easy to find, but that sort of looks like one. And what else we got here? That could be one. It looks really, really old. Oh, there's one. There's no question about it. Here you go. That's another blaze. That one's probably another one, except this tree is, looks like it's kind of dying, so I'm not sure. But they're fairly unmistakable. Sometimes you'll uh, see blaze trails and the trails are practically gone. Someone decided to make that trail. It could have been 30 years ago. Uh, the blazes last a long time. The trees stand a long time, so. Yeah. That's a big one. And here you got two. There's one there. And then there's one there. And the park staff even put one of these. There you go. Those are blazes. This is a much different perspective. I don't think this is Yellowhead Mountain. I don't know. I don't think it's all. It's probably just uh, considered a chain. Where the hike took me was all the way around the right side of that peak. I already got a good shot of it from this spot. And so, you know, into that valley all the way over on the right. Right? All the way around there. This is pretty cool too, though. Well, my knee brace has given me a blister. And I mean, literally I had to stop immediately and take care of it because it was obvious when it got through the skin and just stung. So I have cut a little square out of moleskin and I'll put that on there and that'll have to work. Otherwise I'll have to figure out a way to get out of here without it. Um, I do have one of these tensor bandages, you know. I mean, I always figured this thing was temporary. I just, but for $100, I guess I could use it when I'm coming down in some scrambles, but obviously I'd have to use moleskin and such. But I tend to think I'm going to, I'm going to figure out how to use this thing properly. If I can wrap it around my knee, then I mean, I already bring it along just in case of a twisted angle or something. So I should, I should figure out how to use it properly because I've already figured out that this big monster is a little too much to be bringing in a backpack just, just in case of a snore, a knee, right? So, yeah. Anyway, I'll get some moleskin on there. I'll put it back on and carry on. Pretty amazing. Good place for a break too with a bench. Well, this moleskin lasted maybe half hour. And then when I tore, I pulled the knee brace back to check on it because it didn't seem to be doing much anymore. It came right off. So I'm going to put it on. I'm going to get an even bigger piece and put that on and see if I can make that work. I still got all this elevation to lose, so I don't want to take the knee brace off. There. That's a pretty aggressive piece. Let's see if that holds. Well, I'm, all, I'm almost done. Here's the trail. Apparently in 1994, they found the trail was too hard to find, so they moved the trailhead. Like they, yeah, they found the trailhead was too hard to find. And they still have the marking over there. So, make things a little more interesting, I'm gonna follow 
the trail is barely, you can barely make it out. But I'm gonna follow that down to the old trailhead. Obviously this is it, because they never took this down. Yeah. Trail is still pretty obvious though. I mean, it's just covered in leaves. Still a trail. Uh, until now it was obvious. Where'd it go? Well, I could just battle my way down that. I sort of wanted to see where that trail came out. Well, it's definitely not obvious from this perspective. Well, wherever the pullout was for that trail has been obliterated now. So, that guy there, it did okay with that, uh, you know, uh, oh, whoa. Cool, 1931. <laughs> Talk about finding something by accident. Oh, that's pretty neat. I guess I'll see you on the next one, Ed. Maybe I'll do another wrap up for this because, you know, I find that my wrap ups are a little uh, brain dead. Primarily because, I mean, I'm brain dead, right? There's the new trailhead. But uh, I'm gonna go sign the register. Make sure it shows that I've signed back in. Always do the register so that Parks Canada can take it to whoever is trying to cut their funding and, you know, say, look, people are using the trail. And then I'll be on my way. I'm going to drive all the way back to Edmonton from here, about 50 kilometers to Jasper and then all the way to Edmonton. So on the next one, thanks for watching. I'm at Lucerne Campground. There's a quick little hike here, about half hour. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if it's worth it. Labrador Tea Trail. I kind of hang out here long though because I did not bring mosquito repellent, and I'm getting bit. Eey, I'm killing stuff. Oh, I just killed a bloody one. There's a bite. Not bad though. The soothing sound of babbling water. You have to think that's millions, millions of years of instinct kicking in. If you're near water, that is life. Because everything needs water to survive. So as an animal, You'd be attracted to it because obviously it keeps you alive. But yeah, that uh, soothing sound remains part of our DNA, it seems. Nice. That uh, beach and wonderful little lake, that's something that no other campground in Mount Robson can boast. Pretty sure that nothing in Jasper can boast that either. That's just really nice. Wow. That was sweet.
Oh, looks like I'm basically done this trail. I like Lucerne Campground. If you got nothing else to do, you're here, go take that little walk. It's all right. Okay, on the next one.